I was lying in bed one evening when I wondered, what if I wrote a pixel sorter in a falling sand game in a fragment shader? Way back in June of this year, I stumbled on some pixel sorting shaders by a shader tour user named Cyphered. They use the odd even sort, which was developed specifically for parallel processors. The odd even sort of an array works in two rounds, odd and even. The odd round starts by using the odd indices of an array to separate the array into pairs. The program checks the order of numbers in each pair and swaps them if needed to make sure they go from smaller to larger. Then the even round starts and the array is separated into the pairs using the even indices and the same conditional swaps are applied. If we keep alternating between odd and even rounds, the array will get sorted. We can do that on the GPU by viewing a row of pixels as an array of values and storing results from the previous round to a buffer. But we have a problem. As we alternate between odd and even rounds, the position of each pixel will also alternate between left and right in a pair. That means whatever code we write to do comparisons for swapping needs to take into account that the pixel could be on the right or left in that comparison in a given frame. To do this, we use the frame counter to determine if the frame is odd or even. During an even frame, we know all pixels with even indices will be on the left of the comparison, which means we swap if they are larger, and vice versa for the odd indices. Then for an odd frame, all of that flips. Now, in a previous video, I explained my GPU implementation of Falling Sand based on this research paper. The important thing is it uses the 2x2 Margulis neighborhood and a new set of sand rules based on 2x2 block states. Once I had that working, I was able to make some awesome projects like this simulation with water and sand. One commenter on that video mentioned noticing that as the sand sank, it looked like there were bubbles of air or empty space rising to the surface. Soon after reading that, I was lying in bed and it hit me. That specific falling sand simulation technically was a pixel sorter. The water and sand interaction was a sort between sand and water. But how easy would it be to go from that to a real pixel sorter? Actually, all I had to do was replace all of the material rules with one very general rule. If the sand above has a larger value than the sand below in the 2x2 block, then swap. Do you notice anything interesting here? The odd even sort looks very similar to the basic Margulis neighborhood. It seems like the Margulis neighborhood is a 2x2 two two version of the odd even round process. Now that you have a general understanding of how I made this pixel sorter, let me show you some of the things that I made with it. As you can see, sorting alone does not give us the sort of look that popular pixel sorted images have. It needs to show more of the actual underlying image and it needs to look more groovy. Both of these effects are achieved by just not sorting pixels where things are either too dark or too light or both. In the Falling Sand game, I did this by setting the pixels to a dummy material, not sand, if their luminance is less than 0.1. Hey everyone, it's Yusef from the future. I'm currently working on uploading the video and the thumbnail, and I just noticed that most of the other thumbnails on this topic have more pronounced grooves that are more randomly scattered throughout the image. So I did a little bit more work. I discovered that with a blue noise texture, we can get that same effect by setting some of the pixels to not sand uh, based on the, the luminance of the blue noise texture. So I'm showing a few examples of that, but the rest of this video won't have that because I just figured out how to do it. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video and and that's it. That's, I was about to end the video. That's, that's awkward. The pixel sorters by Cypher on Shader Toy use a vector to control the direction by controlling what direction the pixels look to make comparisons. The falling sand version has rules, but they technically end up doing the same thing. It's a bit redundant, but in my opinion, it's easier to set up. Also, using rules like this, you can easily set different areas of the screen to sort in different directions. I was hoping to discover some cool video effects, but that was tricky. The main idea is resetting pixels when some random value is exceeded. 
If we have full columns randomly resetting, it looks okay. Not great in my opinion. I got it to look better by mixing the result with the new image value over time if a column resets so things would be a bit smoother. That was all still kind of boring, so I started experimenting with driving the effect by different things. For example, I set up a Voronoi grid that returned a unique value for each cell ID. I used that to drive the sorting direction, left, right, 45 degrees, up and down. It looked pretty damn cool, like some sort of glitchy broken glass effect. After that, I tried layering Voronoi using multiple buffers, but the performance suffered. Then I made a procedurally generated FBM using a 3D noise volume. I used that to drive the direction of the sorting, which gives an even more random result. Both of these effects would be great as transitions or linked to something appearing and disappearing in general. Then I accidentally ran code while I had multiple versions of the rule set uncommented, which meant it tried to sort in multiple directions each frame. With this effect, a simple image of a building with windows suddenly looks like an array of aquariums with bubbles rising within them. Somehow, the sorting reverses direction when it reaches as far as it can go in one direction. Lastly, I hooked up the basic sorting video effect to some Raymart scenes and used the depth buffer to drive the resetting time. After adding color, the result was surprisingly attractive, almost like paint rising off of some massive structures as you fly through them. So you might be wondering, does pixel sorting have any real application? For my Falling Sand version specifically, I don't know, but for pixel sorting in general, check out this research paper from 30 years ago. They start with pixels holding 2D signal data. First, they reserve part of each pixel to hold the initial pixel position. Those positions will be in sorted order already. Then they sort vertically and then horizontally based on the signal data. The result is clusters of pixels that are similar. They can mark the cluster somehow and then unsort horizontally and then vertically using the saved pixel position. This means once you sort the positions on both axes, the pixels will have returned to where they started. This was all 30 years ago though, and I'm not sure what that means. Depending on your perspective, the performance of this algorithm is either really bad, okay, or really good. Sorting a 1920 by 1080 image vertically means sorting 1080 pixels. Doing this using the odd even sort in a simple fragment shader has a worst case of 1080 frames. If you limited your frame rate to 60 frames per second, it would take up to 18 seconds. It's even worse if you go horizontally, and even worse still if you go diagonally. The cool thing is that the GPU doesn't do too much work each frame because you process just one swap each frame. If you want to improve on this though and move towards a more real time effect, we can. For instance, using the unofficial Shader Toy plugin, we can set the number of draws per frame to 8. I was hoping that would bring the maximum time down to 2.25 seconds, but no, it was more like 5 seconds for odd even and 8 seconds for falling sand. I think using multiple buffers instead might have helped more. These benchmarks though are just to me using Shader Toy on a 10 year old graphics card. We can expect better performance elsewhere. However, I actually like the effect of seeing the sorting happen more slowly in real time and the ghosting or moshing that comes with it. After making all these discoveries, I started wondering if this kind of self-organized sorting happens in nature at all. The answer, if you think about it, is kind of yeah. If you shake a bag of trail mix for a while, you'll notice the larger nuts will start to appear on top. That might seem counterintuitive since if they're larger and heavier, shouldn't there be more stuff on top of them, keeping them from moving up? The theory is that as you shake the bag, gaps form between the nuts. Smaller nuts and seeds like sunflower seeds are more likely to fall through those gaps. The largest nut, which is often the Brazil nut, will remain on top, which is why this effect is also called the Brazil nut effect. By shaking the trail mix, you have sorted it roughly by size. 
There's actually been a lot of debate about how this happens, but the technical name is granular convection, and it also happens at much larger scales than trail mix. For example, in farmers' fields all over New England, which is northeastern US, throughout the winter and the spring, ice melts and freezes up to 60 times. Each time ice freezes, it expands. And when it melts, it leaves gaps that smaller sand and rocks can fall through, but larger ones can't. So, when farmers go out to plow in the spring, they are greeted by field stones everywhere. These can be used for many things. I think it's cool that, just like field stones, I found a new use case for my falling sand simulator. It might not be the most elegant solution, but it works, and it led to some interesting discoveries. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.